What cleaning business secrets do you need to know in order to catapult your business above all of your competitors in your marketplace? Guess what? We get to talk about that today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, I have an answer for you today, and it's the show sponsor, which is House Call Pro. This is a service software. It's the number one service software that runs in the background of service business providers' businesses. It does all the follow-up emailing and texting of your clients. It sends out your invoices. It keeps track of all of your customer details and it replaces the need for an administrative assistant. You can have House Call Pro and this employee, this software never calls out sick. They never not show up. They just run smoothly and seamlessly in the background of your business for no hassle. Oh, don't you love it? housecallpro.com forward slash Angela. They have set up a deal for me and my friends where it's even less than a price of a tank of gas. It's super affordable. And if you're thinking about it, go check it out, housecallpro.com forward slash Angela. All right, now on to today's show. I am super excited about today's show because this is one of the cleaning business secrets that if you learn this, you're never gonna look back. All right, the cleaning business secret is how do you create an ad where you don't offer discounts and give away the farm because you're trying to just bring business in the door. I've got a special guest here joining us today, and this is Carrie Knight, who's the owner of Maid Brigade. She's been there for 12 years in Tampa Bay, Florida, and she runs an amazing empire down there. She's going to share that with us today. Please help me welcome Carrie Knight. Yes, I love marketing. So I always say to people, marketing is my jam. I didn't discover it until a little bit later in life, but I really love marketing. I actually study the game of marketing and I really can't get enough. So this is definitely my expertise and I'm happy to be able to share my knowledge with all of you. I, I tell you what, every house cleaning business owner at some moment wakes up and they have this ah moment where they're like, I got to write an ad. I got to get more business in the door. And yes. what words am I supposed to use? What am I supposed to say? Right. Right. So take us down that rabbit hole and tell us where do you start when you're writing an ad? So I have five tips, I guess, when it comes to writing an ad. And all of us are basically writing an ad in either like a local newspaper or a local magazine. So you're tailoring it to your you know, local audience, um, whatever your demographic is. So the first thing that I'm going to say is that you want to make sure that your ad is that it's captivating. It, it captures the audience. So whether that means um, you have some sort of image or there's great colors on the ad, or um, maybe it's funny, you want to make sure that you have something that's captivating and catches their attention quick, because we all know that, you know, our attention span is what, less than seven seconds. Um, so you have to have something that really engages your potential prospect who's looking at your ad. You know, if you're talking about Facebook, like a, a sponsored ad on Facebook, the, the equivalent is stop the scroll. So you want to have an ad that's going to make somebody stop and look at your ad. And that's the same thing if you're going to be putting something in print advertising. You have to stop the scroll or stop them dead in their tracks to look at your ad. Let me ask you a question about images since you brought that up. On mm -hmm. the images, does the image have to be relevant to the thing that you're advertising or can you just have a picture of a cute cat because people, it will stop the scroll and people like cute cats. Uh, the cute cat certainly is not going to stop the scroll. And here's the, here's the thing, neither is a picture of a house. So if you show me a house cleaning ad and it has a picture of a house, it's not enough. That doesn't stop people in their tracks and say, oh, let me call this cleaning company because they showed me a picture of a house. It's just not enough. So it's something, again, that grabs their attention um, because that image, you just can't stop looking at it. That's what your image needs to be in order to call people's attention to your ad. And so would it be fair to say that only one image would be good for an ad instead of having like a collage of images? or three or four images in the same space that detract from each other or compete with each other? Well, I think so. I mean, in my opinion, I would only have one you know, actual image and then maybe your logo. If you have multiple images, you're talking about a small space to begin with. So once you start consuming all that space with images, then there's no 
there's nothing left for words. And it's the words that are also going to draw people into your ad. My personal opinion is to lead with one image and then one logo, which would be your company logo. And you just mentioned words. Are there special words that you should use to make an ad that makes people stop scrolling? Well, that's my number two um, piece of advice. So number two is what I call, and we've all heard this before, but with them. W-I-I-F-M is what's in it for me. And it's not me as a business owner, it's the customer, what's in it for them. So the words that need to be on the page or on your ad is what is most appealing to them. They wanna see an ad that solves their problem. So specifically, are you tired of cleaning every weekend? Are you sick of coming home Friday night to a dirty house? I mean, whatever that is, Those are words that speak to your audience because that's the problem that they're having. And your ad has to prove to them that you're the right one who's going to solve their problem. So I'm going to ask a question you're probably going to throw rocks at me for because in the industry, I know that you are against discounts. But if I'm creating an ad trying to get business in the door, is it okay if I have like $25 off? or I have some kind of a discount just to get people in the door. So the thing about discounts, when you lead with a discount, is you're attracting a discount customer. So the discount customer is the opposite of the customer you wanna have in the long run. That's not your long-term customer. So if you're looking at this from a strategy standpoint, a discount customer isn't a long-term bi-weekly customer. They're purely a a price shopping customer who's going to be one time or, you know, maybe once every two years. And that's ultimately who, you know, you don't want to do business with because they're going to be a lot of work and a lot of trouble. And then my question is, because we talked earlier about stopping the scroll, is there a different type of ad for direct mail than there is for say Facebook? I mean, Facebook just gives you a lot more options. Like you, obviously you could do a video, you could do a customer testimonial inside of Facebook. So I think you have a lot more options. And then even within Facebook, you know, you can actually slice the type, you know, find the customer that you want. You can go right after that particular zip code or the demographic that you're looking for. So I just think that Facebook does give you a lot more options, but I I'm led to believe in our industry, most people are doing print ads and not so much Facebook advertising just because the knowledge base isn't there online. In your experience, which is more effective? Well, you're talking to somebody who's kind of more on the digital side of things. I truly believe in the world that we live in today in 2019, your best customer is on Facebook. It's a different customer now who's on print, um, who's picking up a newspaper or a magazine. That's a completely different customer now. Um, My mom, let's just say she's 72 years old. She's going to look at the newspaper every single day. She's going to look at that flyer that that I find so annoying in my driveway every Wednesday, she's going to open that up and read about the local activity. She knows, you know, the local businesses. That's the demographic who's reading newspapers today. Um, Having a local presence is important. I personally believe in 2019, if you want to build a a strong business, um, you know, a legacy business with repeat customers, your best bet is Facebook. This there's a sidestep from the original. Um, what do you write in the ad? Right. But would you suggest hiring somebody that knows Facebook ads, or would you suggest that the house cleaner themselves kind of double down and learn the ins and outs of Facebook advertising? You know, there's so much inside of Facebook advertising. I personally believe that this is something that you outsource. Um, just make sure that you're hiring somebody who can show you proof. Um, in their numbers, you know, to make sure that you've seen results that they've had with other businesses. It's not expensive to hire an agency to run your Facebook advertising. So it's expensive for you to run it because of the time loss on other activities that you could be doing to generate, you know, more revenue inside your business. So something like Facebook advertising, I think hiring a a marketing agency is your best bet unless you want to study or buy a course on how to do it. You can do it. Um, it's just the time that's involved in you learning versus paying somebody. I just think you're, you're quicker. The gains are quicker when you hire somebody who knows what they're doing. Now, it's interesting that you said that because, um, I run five different Facebook groups for different elements of my business Mm -hmm. and there's not a day that goes by that somebody doesn't post an ad. And then they ask other people that do not know copy ad ad copy and they don't know images and graphic design and all these things they are asking. It's kind of like the blind leading the blind. Hey, what do you think of my Facebook ad? 
Well, they're actually asking, not their customers, but they're actually <laughs> asking their competitors, sure. how do you like my ad? And then I can only imagine that some of the advice they get is, I'm going to say wayward. So what do you say to the people that are getting advice from their peers and colleagues and competitors rather than from the experts themselves? That's such a great question, Angela. My answer to that is your customers vote with their wallets and their opinion is the only opinion that matters. So when it comes to any business, you know that it's working. Your ad is working when people call you and they give you money. <laughs> and that's the only opinion that matters at all is your customer who breaks out their wallet and gives you money. That's fantastic advice. Is there anything else you would like to leave our listeners with as far as how to get an ad opened? So there's one more element to this that I, I teach to, to students in my training is that a lot of times in our industry, we get caught up with kind of throwing up on our customer about all these things about us, right? We're licensed, we're bonded, we're insured. Well, so is everybody, right? We're going to come and clean your house. We're green cleaning. So is everyone. I, I mean, it's like we're all so redundant in what we do that we're all we're kind of a commodity business. So you have to do something that's different to stand out from everyone else. And I can't tell you, you know, what makes you different. You have to decide that within your own company. But if you don't have something that makes you different, then you're probably going to be left in the dust because you know, in this industry, we don't compete on our strengths. We compete on our differences. And that's really important that you define, you know, who you are as a company and communicate that in all of your advertising of what makes you different. So, you know, if you don't have that in your ad, again, going back to what makes people pick up the phone and call, you need to make sure that this is something that they want. What is it that they're asking for? Put it in your ad. And, and show them, you know, how you're different from your competitors. And that's what's going to make people pick up the phone. Now, you mentioned a minute ago, this is what you teach in your training. Can you tell us a little bit about your training program and where our listeners can go to find you and hire you so that they can learn to write better ads and get their customers to stop scrolling and click and call? Um, I'm actually teaching a lot about marketing. As I said, marketing is my jam. And I want to be able to help... Um, cleaning business owners with the right marketing for their company. Because if you're not doing marketing, then you're not growing your business. So I really want to be able to help people um, with shortcuts, like the ones that I didn't know about when I started my business. So I'm offering a program um, called Cleaning Boss University. It's a 12-week program where I teach you all facets inside the business. It's heavy on the sales and marketing side because that's how you grow your business. Um, and I am offering like I said, a 12-week coaching program. It's coming up here on August 25th is when we're actually getting started. And you can take a look at that at www.cleaningbossuniversity.com. All righty, and that is Carrie Knight. Isn't this fantastic? You've learned something today that's going to revolutionize your business. Thank you so much, Carrie, for sharing this information with us. And I'm going to leave links in the show notes so you guys can race over there and get all of the stuff she just talked about. All right, now I want to thank you. Thank you for tuning in and watching the show. Thank you for coming back day after day after day. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for being part of the tribe. Without you guys, this would not be a show. You're part of it. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.